Merlin's tour of the universe, a traveler's guide to blue moons and black holes, Mars stars, and everything far. I love that title. <laughs> yeah. Who writes as a fictional character from the Andromedia? Andromeda. Andromeda. And yes. I told yes. you we screw up the science on this. Good Lord, have mercy on me. He answers more than 200 reader questions about everything from the number of galaxies in the universe, Univos, uh, to what would happen if the sun disappeared. And Tyson, of course, is director of the Hayden Planetarium here in New York City. Oh, boy, Neil. I'm so glad to have you here. It's Monday. Tough yeah, morning for you. Know. Yeah. No, but, but Tony Merlin's five billion years old, so you know he yeah. knows stuff. He does know a lot, and yes. you've, you've, you've borne witness to the entire history of the universe, right? Yeah, so the difference is it's not just a simple Q&A book. If you want an answer, just go to a wiki page, right? Mm -hmm. It's This was a, derived from a column I wrote 35 years ago, mm. and it's where I honed almost all of my awareness and sensitivity, methods, tools, and tactics for communicating science to the public. This Merlin character has been around for the history of the Earth, has known all famous historical science characters. Mm -hmm, yeah. So if someone says, Dear Merlin, I don't quite understand gravity, Merlin goes back and recalls a conversation had with Isaac Newton. This one, though these, yeah, my brother, this, this is the artist, this illustrated it. Yeah. This says, what would happen if the Earth fell up, stopped rotating? Yeah, yeah, if the Earth stops rotating. Well, this right. is what happens, like, sun has spots, right? right. So what do we do about that? Uh, so, so these are illustrations that appear in the book uh, yeah, Superman is not leaving Earth if he just... <laughs> but you know what's fun about this, Neil? In addition to the illustrations, it's the way Merlin answers questions. Yes. For instance, yeah. can you list all the planets in order from the sun? Yeah, what so it, yeah, in the day, it was my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas, but then Pluto left. Yeah. yeah. People got all upset. I said, no, this is easy. Yeah. Just go, my very educated mother just served us nachos. There you <laughs> go. Okay, right. how about this? Are red stars red because they're hotter than the sun? What oh, does Merlin say? Okay, so Merlin could just say no, yes. but why, why not have fun? And so the, Merlin says, on canvas with paint <laughs> in the artist's school, it is red that is hot and blue that is cool. But in science we show as the heat gets higher, a star will glow red like the coals of a fire. Mm -hmm. But raise the heat some more and what is in sight? The star has turned bright white. But the hottest of all, Merlin says unto you, is neither red nor white when a star has turned blue. So, See what Merlin does. So, wait, Merlin's so smart. <laughs> Merlin's so smart. So Merlin's a fictional character because we were asking earlier, like you, you seem to be potentially Merlin himself here. Oh, well, I, so everything I developed for this Merlin, it's, it, of course it's not the Arthurian Merlin, Merlin. Yeah. this is a Merlin from Andromeda. Andromeda, yes. thank you very yeah. much. So that, so that Merlin, mm. I was able to Im imbue this character with the power of access to the history yeah. of human thought. And Merlin is also, for example, friends with Santa. Mm -hmm. So, because Santa lives on the North Pole. Right. The North Pole is a very commonly referenced thing. We talk about longitude, what time is, someone asked what time is it on the North Pole? It's time to go back home because there is no time <laughs> on the North Pole. <laughs> so Merlin will answer in quirky ways. And so, for example, Merlin recommended that Santa pitch tent on the North Pole instead of the South Pole, because the, the, the North Pole is 60 degrees warmer mm -hmm. in the winter at yeah. 20 below zero. And so my brother drew, a, drew Santa on like a surfboard <laughs> yeah. in a bathing suit. So, Was it tough for your brother to get that job? Uh, no, because he's, he, he, my brother Stephen there he is. Tyson. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's him right there yes. uh, to my right. Uh, he's, uh, he's an art, been in arts his whole life. Yeah. Yeah. He went to the high school of music and art. Yeah. Yeah. So he knows yeah. what he's doing. Yeah, you mentioned human thought. And yes. uh, I want to stay in that pocket because sure. this book is fascinating. It's educating, right, for those that want to learn more. But I'm not going to lie to you. As I'm reading this, I had a little bit of this existential crisis because I'm coming to this reality that I am small in this really vast universe. But then also the planet we live on is very fragile. And I started thinking about the end. Like, what do you want us to take away from this book? We got one minute to go. So <laughs> please lift the mood. Oh, that, yeah. that the universe is knowable. And as small we are, as we are in time and in space and our physicality, the fact that this few pounds of gray matter between our ears can contemplate and deduce the nature of the universe should be the most powerful thought you have in a day. Okay, that makes me feel better. There you go. You seem to take a couple of digs at astrology. Deservedly so. Why? 
Well, well, just a piece, just a couple just, of days. Just a couple. I mean, so Petraj will say, "What's your sign in Capricorn. there?" It's described. Yes. I mean, Merlin just tells it like it is. Yeah. You know, the signs no longer line up with yeah. how they did two thousand years ago when it was all laid out. And there are thirteen constellations in the zodiac, not twelve. One of them is Ophiuchus. And if you thought you were Scorpio, <laughs> you're probably Ophiuchin. And all Scorpions and Ophiuchins are. Are you speaking Hebrews. English, Neil? <laughs> I, I don't know what is going on. Uh, but, but I like I like the book because it, it yeah. goes from readers from four to ninety. Yeah. And it's so clear that you love science so much. Well, yeah, and so it's, it's a celebration, I'd like to think of it. Yeah. And, and in fact, if you're not much of a reader, the audiobook version of this, I got people like with a British accent reading uh, Mer uh, reading Newton yeah. and an Italian accent reading Leonardo da Vinci. Wow. Merlin has a conversation with Leonardo in a piazza I'm in, gonna, in Florence. Uh, I'm going to submit a question to the next edition of this book about whether I should be impressed by the SpaceX astronaut suit. I think the answer is no. Neil deGrasse Tyson, thank you very much. <laughs> Merlin's tour of the universe goes on sale tomorrow.